Hi everyone. So today we're going to talk about isolation. I've been noticing there's two types of isolation going on. There's isolation for people who are obviously alone, but then quite a few friends who have families have told me that they're feeling very isolated because they're not in their office. Um, and even if you are with a family, you could still feel completely alone. So I think the number one thing you need to do is you need to reach out. I think that's also the hardest thing to do. So just remember that as, as we go through this discussion because there's, you know, you on the giving end and you on the receiving end. So I want to talk about both. Um, so what can you do to help alleviate your isolation? Um, I think there's never been more uh, online communication Ever. So for me personally, I I got a Zoom account so I can talk from, you know, I, the paid account so I can talk for more than 40 minutes. Zoom is free for up to 40 minutes if you want to. I think you can have one, two people. Um, but I got the paid account so I can go for 24 hours with somebody. So dinners, you know, people are like cooking their own dinner or going on Zoom. I mean, I have some friends at night here in the city and we just, you know, put on FaceTime and just sort of do your thing. Um, I have gotten back in touch with dear, dear friends from England when I lived there in the 1980s. And we are now having a Zoom every other week. I have my friends from TED and TEDx. We are getting together and doing Zoom calls. So reach out. Um, if you are thinking you are feeling lonely and isolated, just know other people are also. You know, you can also take courses. I am taking a self-development course, but I discovered, I told you a couple videos ago that I have Roku TV and I discovered YouTube on it. I discovered the World Science Festival. I mean, secret about me, I wanted to be an astrophysicist, but in the 70s, my math teacher said girls can't do math and I got booted out of the astronomy class that I had tried to get into in high school. So that was my physics and astrophysics career out the window. Um, so I discovered the World Science Festival and I'm learning about the slit experiment. And if you don't know what that is and you're bored, Google it and watch information. It'll blow your mind. So, you know, just find what excites you. Like there is everything out there, anything you want to know about anything, knitting, baking, probably brain surgery if you're interested in it. Just Use your mind in whatever way you can. I mean, I'm also at night, relax. I do, I'm doing jigsaw puzzles. I really enjoy doing them. Um, so with regard to reaching out to people, if you reach out to someone and you say, hey, how you doing? And the person responds, eh, I'm not doing too well. Don't send them a freaking emoji sad face with a tear coming out. Like they're freaking asking for help. It is very hard for someone to ask someone for help. It is very hard for someone to say to someone, I'm feeling lonely, I'm feeling disconnected. If you reach out and someone says, I'm not feeling well, they're really not feeling well. So if you don't have the capacity to listen, to call them to be in touch, at least validate what they're going through. You know, you can reply and say, I'm so sorry you're not feeling well. I'm sending you love. Then you can keep it quick. If you really cared when you asked them how they were doing, you would pick up the phone or you would get on, you know, Zoom or FaceTime or whatever means of communication you use and you would reach out and you would speak with them and to see how they're doing. Um, I have found it fascinating is the word. You know, I found it annoying. Like, People say, hey, how you doing? And I wasn't feeling well for a while. And a couple times I said, I'm not feeling well. You know, I got no response or got like uh, the emoji face. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Now, if you're on the receiving end of that, if, if someone has reached out and you said, oh, God, I'm having any panic attacks or whatever, and they don't respond, no, it's not about you. Everyone is stressed out. Everyone is anxious. So if... If you need to speak with someone and you feel like no one is there, it's not because you're a bad person or there's anything wrong with you. It just means that the person you've reached out to isn't able to do it at the time. It could be they're too anxious. It could be, you know, they're dealing with 20 family members. Um, 
It could be they don't know how to. One of the biggest lessons I've learned in life, and this was a big one, I'm not the center of the universe. I know, it's crazy. But when you really grasp that and you realize that like, if you're not getting the 650,000 likes on Facebook, uh, like I mentioned in the last video, or you know, if you reach out and someone doesn't respond to you or it takes two months, it's not about you. It's not about you. It is not about you. It's them and their stuff. Uh, my attitude is, and look, I still get hurt because I want, I'm a codependent people pleaser. I want everyone to love me. I'm working on that. But what I'm realizing is that other people have their shit too. And it's okay. We all have our shit. It's all okay. So as I said, if you reach out and if you tell someone you're not feeling well, maybe you have to be very blatantly open and say, I'm having a nervous breakdown. But even if you do that and they can't respond, it's about them. Reach out to someone else. Don't stop reaching out. Please don't stop reaching out. You are enough. This is a very screwed up time. Um, the, people are having, you know, st strange reactions. Like my neighbor who has just decided to just start banging holes in the wall. So I apologize if you can hear that. <sighs> but we are all in this together. You are good enough. You will be okay. If you have to, you can put on Netflix. Just watch something good. Uh, oh, the Slit Experience, World Science Festival. Highly recommend it. You'll love it. You'll love it. You'll love it. Okay, take care. Till tomorrow.